did you look for in your vendor partnerships that you had? Of course, the vendors are so important. I mean, you know as well as I do, Danny, you can't be a good restaurant facilities professional if you don't have good vendors, period. I mean, there's there's no ifs, ands, or buts. And I think Ripma has great vendors. But basically, the honesty, the communication, the integrity, the cost of service is it's not even in the top, for me, it's not even in the top five, because these are people, a lot of your 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 groups, your service providers, I mean, you're they've got to be available Saturday night at 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And when you call them, they got to pick up the phone and they got to get out there sometimes. So those are the kind of people you you build a relationship with. And it's it's a it's a formal business and friendly relationship for that matter. And what I found out too is their communication with with operations at the store, at least for me, was was huge. Uh, they may not be the best vendors out there and for the quality and everything, but by God, they kept operations happy. So my phone wasn't ringing uh, about, hey, what's wrong with these the service tech out here or whatever, or for this company. They're not, you know, they're just not communicating or whatever. And the communication, obviously, back to me, and the communication to operations was was huge. And and I think for the most part, they know. Good vendors, they know the restaurant industry. They know, they know what they're what they're getting. Most of them, they should. They know what they're getting into, and they start forming a relationship with, with a with a restaurant facility manager. Sure, I, you know, not when I had six or eight restaurants, but in the day when I started getting way up there with 800, 850, 900, I don't, I don't know that they, they became eyes. You know, they right. were my eyes to tell me, hey. The way you've set your cooking lines up, there's a problem here. And every single store I go to, your restaurants are complaining about it and so on. Okay, what is it? Well, it's this. And it's all about steps. You know, as well as I do, you know, the way the kitchen line done is all about steps and reducing yeah. number of steps. If you did this instead of that, you would da 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 da. They know that because they're in there and they hear it, you know, or something, you know, they're looking out for what's going on and and they're helping you in every way, you know, um, whatever it may be, you know, you got a bad manager, you got something going on that you don't know about something, they're, they're the people that know. And part of that, that's what a good a, a facility manager, you've got to help your vendors. You got to yeah. help and you got to help them with information, what's important, what things you'll tolerate, what things you won't and, and put that out there on the table. And then as you know, it's important I'm sure with Joe at Rightway and others that you did business with, you knew their side of the business really well too. Yeah. And that's important. I knew Gordon's side and the other contractor side of their business of what was important to them as well. Cause it's not just about you, it's about them too. And absolutely. Them. You want them to succeed. You want, you know, you've got to succeed. You want everybody to, to be in the same boat. And you can't everybody. succeed if they don't. Right. What, what I found is, Probably about ninety percent of the time, quite frankly, the vendor side or the or the service tech was was in the right, and ops wasn't. But ops is you're getting paid by the same people ops are, so it, that's a that was a tough one to walk sometimes. It is, and and where where R and M fell on the pack line was always a debate, and and like yeah. you said, when it was above the pack line, and the manager's bonus was tied off to it, you you dealt in a whole bunch of this is too much. I don't think it's right. So I, I was lucky. That's the way Ruby's was early on. Then we flipped it and it got put below the line. I owned it. They didn't own it. All they owned is calling it in and making sure it got done. And then that makes whole, that makes your job a lot. That makes your job a lot easier. Yeah. The whole world changes. Not about the money anymore. That, that doesn't matter. It's about getting it done. There are some things like preventive maintenance, PM programs, that should always be below the line. I mean, there sure. are there are certain services that if you operate a restaurant, you gotta do. You gotta you gotta do the HVAC, you gotta pump the grease trap, you gotta do fire suppression, you have to do hood cleaning. You have to do those. I mean, so why why put it above the line and if if prices change from year to year or whatever and, and it hurts the management's team, it hurts the management's bonus, but that's not that's not right. Now, maybe some R and M, and we've gone both ways in my career too. I was lucky when I was with Five Guys Burgers and Fries. It was kind of your story when I started with with them, and the, I guess it was maybe 2010. 
And it was a franchise. We were their largest franchisee. But when I started, we had 19 stores. A year later, we had 91. And that was fun. But they had nobody in facilities. So they asked me to, to, you know, to set everything up. And I put everything below the line. And God, it was so much easier. I mean, it was just so much easier. But then your phone calls are, hey, I want this fixed like in the next 20 minutes. I don't care what the cost is. Yeah. So you know how that goes, but that, oh, I'd, yeah. rather, I'd rather fight that battle than listen to them complaining about cost because that's always a that, that that's a tougher conflict to get through. Talk just a minute or two, just a little bit about kind of how your facility role led to Rifma. It was in the late '90s, and uh, Ponderosa, like I said, it said earlier, Ponderosa merged with uh, Staking on Benning and some our headquarters closed in Dayton, Ohio, and, and I got transferred down to Dallas, which was fine. And one of the contractors I mentioned earlier, Joe Rightway, I used Joe for a, a lot of jobs. Joe actually had was the director of construction of, I believe it was Steak and Ale back in the 80s and early 90s. And then he broke off and started his own company, Rightway Construction. So Ponderosa struggled a little. Metro, they were part of Metro Media, and they struggled in the late 90s and, and early aughts. And they came in with came to me one day and they said hey we're switching our payment terms from net 30 to net 180 and uh well you you, you know as well as i do yeah. you call your contractor and say hey we got a wider heater out you need to get over there and replace that but we're not going to pay you for six months so but i also started looking for a job so i got a job at fridays well joe would I, joe would and then i started using them at friday so joe happened to be in my office one day and he said you know you guys I just came from Brinker and talking to a guy named Chris Kirpus there. And you guys are, you guys all have kind of the same, you're dealing with the same problems. He said, I'm going to set up a meeting. So he set up a meeting shortly after that with the director of facilities for Brinker, a couple of them from Darden, from uh, Applebee's and from Fridays. There may have been one other one. I don't remember, but so we all met at, at the Brinker's headquarters and, and, and we just all started, you know, how you put facilities people yeah. together they can talk forever. So we all started talking about facilities and we're dealing with, you know, we got problem, you know, we need vendors here, we got problems here. And, you know, you're all dealing with the same problems. And I think it was Chris Kirpus said, you know, we almost need to have like an association. And bingo, Joe Robertson stood up and took over the meeting. He wanted us to come up with that, but that was his plan the whole time. And then he had some handouts and said, okay, yeah, we need to form an association. So that's really how Riffin got started. Joe Robertson again, we do we has we had some loans from Prisms and we got some loans from from Joe to to keep us floating for the first two years. And and uh so that's how Riffin got started. And after our second conference in Tampa, we we broke free from from Prism and I think that was 06 may have been then our first standalone and, and that's that's how it got started we're just trying to help each other out and the passion of our of our members on the on the vendor side and the restaurant side we're all just trying to help each other and be successful at the same time um i didn't i didn't think it would would grow that quickly that fast but it's and it's kind of leveled off but now now we have we have better uh staff we have more staff and so we're able to go out continue to go after the uh the restaurant members however i'm so proud of our vendor members because one large way we grew is the vendor members would bring in their customers and say hey you really need to join this association knowing full well that that some of there's going to be competition for whatever services they're providing but they felt so good about themselves uh, and rifma that they wanted they wanted their customers to join too so we got a lot of restaurant members through the vendor community and and I, I just think that's that's just outstanding. The thing that I think RIFMA is really good at is for smaller um, smaller chains, regional chains, mm -hmm. that, that really don't have expertise in facilities. You look at uh, like Darden's and Starbucks and stuff. Yeah, they, they can take a lot for education and stuff like that from RIFMA. However, their, their departments are so well built and been around for so long that I think we rifma can offer more and to the smaller guy or girl or franchisee that really is starting facilities or something like that that's that's what i'm on board for as the technical person is to help out and and uh, and help people network with their peers because that's that's just so there if you're looking for a vendor there's no reason to, to go through all that due diligence and, and try to find an electrician in in wyoming i mean 
call me. I'll set you up with, uh, you know, with a panda person out there or a Darden person out there. They'll be more than happy to share share who they use and boom there's your, there's your due diligence right there sure I, mean, I i used it at ruby tuesday and and uh, and the term i've always used is it, it was my google 